Broom Castle lies in a picturesque setting at the confluence of the River Lowther with the River Emont, close to the A66, two miles southeast of Penrith in Cumbria. Its imposing walls and double gatehouse, its keep and its complex of passages and stairways make Broom a fascinating castle to explore, as well as an ideal picnic setting for a family day out. Broom Castle was founded by Robert de Vieux-Pont in the early 13th century on a site originally occupied by the Roman fort of Brocarvum. Vieux-Pont's castle consisted of a stone keep and service buildings surrounded by a timber palisade. The keep is the oldest part of the castle still standing. In 1269 the estates passed to Roger Clifford and the Clifford family through marriage. Roger's son Robert was an important supporter of Edward I in the Scottish Wars which started in 1296 and he carried out much work to strengthen Broome. The wooden outer defences were replaced with stronger stone walls and a large double gatehouse. He built quarters for a garrison and a four-storey stone residential tower called the Tower of League was built in the castle's southwest corner. A fourth storey was also added to the keep. In July 1300, Edward I visited Broome with a large household of followers. Robert Clifford himself was killed at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, and the castle was finally captured and damaged by the Scots in 1388. By 1592, Broome Castle was in a very poor condition. George Clifford, then 3rd Earl of Cumberland, chose to spend much of his time in the south at court as the champion of Queen Elizabeth I. In 1643, Lady Anne Clifford, the only surviving child of George Clifford and his wife Margaret, finally inherited the Clifford estates after many years of family dispute. Although twice married and a countess in her own right, she remained fiercely loyal to her family line. In 1649, when she was 60 years old, she finally moved north and spent her remaining years as a widow rebuilding and restoring the churches and castles of her family estates in Westmoreland and Yorkshire. At Broome, she laid out a fruit and vegetable garden on the site of the old Roman fort and added a new bakehouse and brew house. She made repeated and extended visits to Broome Castle and finally died here on the 22nd of March 1676, aged 86, in the same room in which her father had been born and her mother had died. By the late 1700s the castle lay neglected and ruined, but gradually became a popular tourist attraction, inspiring such artists and antiquarians as William Gilpin and J. M. W. Turner. William Wordsworth, in his Prelude, describes how, as youngsters, he and his sister Dorothy would clamber nervously among the very same ruins and stairways that we can see today. That river and those mouldering towers have seen us side by side, when, having clomb the darksome windings of a broken stair and crept along a ridge of fractured wall not without trembling, we in safety looked forth through some gothic window's open space and gathered with one mind a rich reward from the far-stretching landscape. In the keep, the ground floor was originally used as a store. The first floor would have been a reception room, which would also have been the castle's earliest hall. On the second floor was the Lord's Chamber, in which Lady Anne slept when she stayed here and in which she died. The third floor has a passageway all around a fine central chamber with an impressive fireplace and a finely carved and decorated family oratory chapel built by Robert Clifford in about 1300. In 
It was from here, perhaps, that an excited but nervous William and Dorothy saw their impressive views of the surrounding area. Broom Castle has a fascinating story to tell over many centuries and there is much more to discover and enjoy on your visit. The castle is under the care of English Heritage and is open daily from the end of March to October and weekends during the winter months. Visit www.english-heritage.org.uk for up-to-date information, opening times and prices.